The other day, I was sitting in the audience of a fairly well known preacher, listening to him. And he preached on some really good stuff. I loved his honesty, his transparentness, his openness. And I love the things that the father was placing on his heart. It was clearly from the Holy Spirit. I, I can't deny it. And then he gave the audience his website and he said that, you know, if you want to learn more, you can go there and you can look at his teachings. And actually, the next day I was curious and I actually went to his website to look at the things that he said we could look at. And as I landed on his website, what I found to my distaste is that his work, which was about five to eight lessons of maybe an hour each, were behind a paywall where you had to put down hundreds of dollars in order to watch it. What has happened in American Christianity? What has made us think that just because we live in a capitalist society where profit is everything that we can profit from the word in that way. Now, I know what you may be thinking, PD, what are you talking about? These men have to make their money in some way. And, and I would say, yes, you are right in that uh, the laborer is worthy of his wages. I myself am in full time ministry. This is my livelihood. This is how I put food on the table is by preaching the word of God. By his mercy, he has allowed me to do this. But since when? From where do we get the idea that we need to make the put a cost to the gospel, that there has to be a price to be put down by others in order for the gospel to be heard by them? You see, brothers and sisters, freely we have received and freely we ought to give. Yeshua said, Matthew 10 verse 7 and proclaim as you go, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff for the laborer deserves his food. Now, in Matthew 10 here, it's kind of curious what Yeshua is saying. Jesus says, don't carry money with you. Don't carry anything with you when you go out to proclaim the gospel. And then he ends it with saying, for the laborer deserves his wages. Now, that immediately tells us that Yeshua is expecting his laborers to be receiving wages. And in fact, they need to be trusting so much for these wages to come that they don't even need to be taking their own goal, their own things to help them along the way. In fact, that provision they're going to trust on with their lives, with everything. You see, brothers and sisters, that provision didn't come by them saying, guys, give me a dollar, give me twenty dollars and then I'll tell you what the gospel is. Give me this, give me that, then I'll tell you. Come and get, pay there and then you can come and to hear my preaching. It's not the way it was done. They had to trust the provider of the wages. Their boss was the father himself, God himself, who would provide all things. You know what Yeshua had, did when he had to pay taxes? He asked Peter to get a fish and take a coin from its mouth. Who provided that coin? Was it the fish? Was it a man? No, it was totally God. The provision of the laborer comes from God himself, and he can do this through supernatural means. He can do this through people who give freely. But it is never done in the, in the Torah and in the New Testament. Nowhere in the scriptures do we see ever that the far deems it a right to charge. 
We see, dude, can you even imagine Yeshua? Can you imagine Jesus coming forth and saying and, 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 and selling the things that the, the father has given him? The father gave him revelation. Imagine him giving, putting a price to the things and then giving it to the people off only after they paid. Isn't that ridiculous? We can't imagine our Messiah doing that. Yet why do we do it ourselves? Why do we think it is OK to charge for that which God has freely given? Brothers and sisters, you know, I personally, when the father gave me what I wrote in my book, I the father also whispered, PD, you're not going to sell. You're not going to put a, a barrier to it. You're not going to make it hard for people who can't afford some book to receive it. Everyone needs to be, have access to this. And that is why I made my book free. You can go get it completely free, the full version in PDF, download it and read it all for what it is. You can even print it out. You can do what you want with it. And of course, you know, there is a, a paperback, which it, there is a price to because it costs money to print a book. OK, but it is f- available freely. If forever, if ever we have a we it is impossible for something to get what you have received freely because there is a price to it you're doing it wrong i don't care what your ministry is i don't care what you're teaching on i don't care how much money it costs to get what you got to give you need to make it accessible for those who can't afford it there needs to be a way for people who don't have money to get what you have to offer because you freely receive from the father how dare you how dare you charge for it brothers and sisters listen to me don't tell me that you that you have it hard in terms of provision and that it's hard to trust my i myself i quit my job last year in november not long ago and I was in a prolific role. I was a website designer. I was receiving a good salary. I was able to pay my rent, my bills. And for me, when the father came to my heart and told me to leave my job, it was at a difficult time. Why? Because I was about to marry my wife, Christina, who lives in the United States. I was about to move to a different country. And now the father comes and tells me to quit my job. What are we kidding ourselves? That's that's like the most illogical thing, because the logic would say that you need to keep stay in your job so you can save up for all the expenses that comes with an immigration because an immigration is expensive. Let me tell you, not only that, I'm going to move into a different country, the United States, where the cost of living is going to be more than double what I was, what I had. And now, so now I have to provide for my new newlywed wife. I have to pay rent that was double what I had. I need to be doing all these things. But that's what the father did. And he said, you quit your job. You're going to trust me to do it. You're going to trust me to provide. You're not going to now suddenly start charging for the things you've been doing, the ministry things. No, every single video, every single teaching that I have ever put out online has been available freely to all. At some point, I give it away freely. All is on YouTube. It's free completely every week. It's free. Why? Because I can't charge for what I received freely. And yes, I labored for it. I labored to get the word out. But my boss, my the one who pays me is the father himself. I don't need to charge and put a paywall behind it, brothers and sisters, and neither do you. And so when I moved here, let me tell you that the father provided every single expense. He provided every need, even the ones I didn't see coming. There were so many more expenses that I didn't even know that were on the coming. And the father provided for every single one in order for the mission that he has given me in this country where I am today to be fulfilled. He provided everything and I didn't charge a thing. In fact, me not charging for the videos, for the book, for anything like that, me not charging has actually caused the message to go further than it has ever been able to go. 
And it is actually I have seen the blessing of God come on the ministry because of my trust in him. And listen, I'm not I'm not saying that if you charge that you won't be able to maybe pay your bills. You may be you you, if you if you trust in yourself and your own plans of charging for everything you put out. Yes, you may still by his mercy even still be able to pay your bills. But I tell you that your ministry will not be as blessed as it would have been if you simply trusted in your father to provide for it all. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to ask all the teachers and the ministers, the pastors, all at the sound of my voice, that if you are charging in a way where you are making it inaccessible, your teaching, what the father is giving you to the to people who may not be able to afford it, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Yeshua never did that. And his disciples never did that. Can you imagine what Yeshua would tell his disciples if they started setting up this ministry and they started putting it all and saying, well, if you want to come and listen to the message that our Messiah has given us, you need to come and get online and you need to go pay uh, our, our financial guy there. And then off he paid, you can come in and you can hear the gospel now. You see, brothers and sisters, I understand that events cost money to run. I understand that it costs money to rent a building and things like that. And that's okay. I get that we live in a place where a culture and a world that it's like that. But then thereafter, we can take we have live in a world where we can also at the same time take what we give at events like that and make it available for free for everyone as far as we can. You know, we can do the trouble. But if your entire ministry is simply built around how people pay for your teachings, no, man, you're doing it wrong. We read in the, from the prophet Isaiah, the following Isaiah 55 verse one, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and he who has no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for what is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Everything our father gave, he says, come buy without cost. He's saying you can come and get this without cost. It is free life, salvation, the gospel. It is free. Come and get it without cost. Oh, come, oh, people. And in the same way, I tell you, come to my ministry, come to the ministries of God and come without cost and ministries do not charge. Do not put a price on it where people can't get it because you charge. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I don't want to come to my father one day and hear Well, I gave you all these amazing things, these revelations. I gave you this calling, but then you put a price on it. Who gave you permission to put a price on my word? You know, I am in such fear that I would never be able to do that. I would never be able to simply shift my model to start charging people. I know my father would every month provide every single need that I have. And he he has and he forever will because he is God. He pays better and he's more trustworthy than any other employer there is. Brothers and sisters, we simply let me tell you, I understand why we do this. I understand we are afraid. I understand we have a lack of trust sometimes. And it is hard to believe that the father can make things happen the way he does. But as ministers of the gospel, we have to trust in the supernatural God we proclaim. We have to be able to put trust in that he will provide every single need every single month. And we will continue trusting without charging. Please, brothers and sisters, let us let us be the example to the world. The world says you need to do it this way, but we will come and say, no, our God is the Scott of the supernatural and he supernaturally provides to those who labor for him. And you know what, brothers, if he does not provide for you, listen to me. If he is not providing for your ministry the way that you think he should be, maybe you're in the wrong ministry. Maybe you're not doing what he told you to do. If God was not providing for my ministry and what I do here, I would be going back into the workforce the way I was. The only reason I'm here is because he's still paying the bills. He provides. But if he did not, that would be me taking a sign. I would understand that he is telling me, Petey, I'm not providing because this is not where I want you. 
He provides where He wants you. If He wants you in ministry, He's going to provide. If He's not, maybe you should question your calling and maybe you're doing ministry out of your own desire and will and it's not Him that put you there. Maybe it's your own, you're, you're deceived and you think you should be there and doing it the way you are while you're in fact should be working for your working like, uh, like, like in the workforce in a different kind of job where God wants you, He will provide. And if He doesn't want you in this job, He'll provide for you another job. That's how the Father works. He closes and opens doors where he wants you. So brothers and sisters, let's trust in him. Let him provide. Let him open the door. I have countless testimonies of just in the last year of how God has provided for me and my family. And he will continue. He will do that. He will continue to do that for me as long as I'm in his will. No matter what the people decide, it doesn't matter if an economic crisis hits. It doesn't matter if people close their hands towards me. God, the next month will bring someone else to provide. If someone is is convicted to give, it is convicted by a conviction from God. If someone is not giving anymore and God wants to provide, he will still provide in whichever way he wants. We don't trust in men to pay our bills. We trust in the father. I hope this teaching has blessed you and encouraged you. May God bless you and keep you. Shine your face upon you. Let this count upon you. Give you shalom and blessing. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for more on this. And like this video and share it with others. So we can trust the Father in a wider place than ever before. Blessings and shalom.